So I constantly get questions from so many individuals about what makes each of the attachment styles most attractive and what tend to be those qualities that really draw other people in. So in this video, I am going to cover five of the traits that tend to make fearful avoidant attachment styles most attractive to other individuals. And we will talk a little bit about what to do if you see some of these traits and they draw you in, but maybe you also need to have healthy boundaries in the relationship to yourself as well. So first and foremost, fearful avoidance tend to be very passionate about everything. They tend to sort of have a fire for life. And this is a very common trait amongst all fearful avoidance. I don't think I've really seen too much of an exception to that rule just yet, um, to, unless it's a fearful avoidant who's currently like going through a major crisis. Um, but outside of that, fearful avoidants tend to get very passionate about things very easily and very invested into things um, in a very quick way. And number two, Fearful avoidance tend to have a lot of presence in their relationships. And I find that presence tends to be something that really draws other people in. And I really believe the roots for this is because everybody in childhood, you know, yearn for attunement. Every single person comes into the world and part of how they feel like they are attaching to their caregivers has to do with whether they feel like their caregivers are attuning to them or not. And so attunement tends to give us the sense of, hey, somebody sees me, I matter, I belong somewhere, I am connected to somebody, I am safe. And we have these really deep needs for that growing up in our childhood. And a lot of individuals, because of the nature of life and conditioning and the way things happen, don't really get those needs met the way they would like. And so what we'll often see is in somebody's adult life, a lot of people are subconsciously really seeking presence, seeking attunement from from others. And so when they see a fearful avoidant providing that, that tends to be something that people feel very bonded to very quickly and very drawn towards in a very efficient way. Number three, fearful avoidants tend to have the ability to create a lot of deep connection. They tend to not shy away from asking hard questions and having tough conversations. And they tend to really want to get to know somebody on a deep level. Now, the really interesting thing part, uh, part about this is that fearful avoidance at a subconscious level, they crave that depth from other people because it's one way that they feel emotionally connected to people and it actually serves meeting some of their own needs. But another facet of it is that fearful avoidance because they have they tend to have big trust wounds. When they feel like they can really know and understand somebody, it tends to create subconsciously this greater sense of trust and understanding and, and sort of transparency. Like, well, if somebody's more transparent, and I can sort of see into them and how they operate, there's a greater sense of safety in the fearful avoidance ability to bond with another person. And so that depth for connection is something fearful avoidance sort of yearn for because it meets their needs for emotional connection, but it's also something that meets their needs for safety and trust. And so this tends to be something, again, that I think a lot of people are craving and seeking from childhood, like wanting that depth of connection with their caregivers. And when there are missing pieces of that and somebody grows up and then in their primary attachment relationships, another person provides that, again, it tends to have this greater sense of impact at the subconscious level. Number four, fearful avoidance tend to be really good at finding a way to relate to everybody. And a big part of this comes from the fact that fearful avoidance are very hypervigilant. They sort of notice everything. They're constantly reading between the lines and trying to understand people. And it goes back to what we were just talking about. They try to understand people so deeply. And I think this is sponsored by, at a subconscious level, their need to um, you know, be able to predict things so that they will be okay. You know, we talk a lot about on this channel, how fearful avoidance number one attachment strategy is hypervigilance. It's, it's to read between the lines and sort of predict people's behaviors and patterns. And when they grew up in a, in a lot of chaos in one for, form or another, um, in childhood or as their attachment style formed, then essentially what took place is they learned, okay, if I can constantly read between the lines and guess how somebody's going to behave and guess their mood and guess if I'm safe or not safe, or if things will be, you know, peaceful or really not peaceful, you know, that ability to sort of read the room and read people that way is what kept themselves safe. And that was their primary attachment strategy. Now, as somebody grows up, you know, and, and assuming they haven't really worked on this or changed this in some way, there's still that ability to read into people and notice things and pick up on a little, on, on little tiny things. And this really 
you know, grows their ability to be able to relate to people in a variety of different settings or from a, a variety of different backgrounds or, you know, experiences and sort of bridge that gap to form a connection in one way or another. And if you are fearful, and by the way, and you're listening to this and you're, you're realizing how profound that attachment strategy is for you, and you're finding that, you know, on, on one side, you've got this great ability to read people, but on the other side, you see yourself pairing little changes with a story that hurts you. Like maybe you see somebody pull away a little bit and rather than thinking, Hey, if this bothers me, I can ask about it or have a conversation about it, but it could be that they're tired. It could be that they've had a long week. If you find yourself always going to worst case scenarios in terms of your assumptions, when you do pick up on those little changes, that can actually be a really painful experience for fearful avoidance to go through. And a really great course we have for how to deal with those things in a really healthy way, learning to communicate about them, learning to not tell stories, learning to share your needs. Um, if, if you're seeing things like that unfold, a really great course that encompasses all of that is the emotional mastery and belief reprogramming course. It's probably one of the most powerful courses at PDS for fearful avoidance. And you can check that out for free for seven days. Um, and that link to do so is down below in the description box. And last but not least, fearful avoidance tend to make people feel very seen and very known. And again, all of this kind of is sponsored by that, like that hypervigilant attachment strategy they have where they pick up on little things. And when a fearful avoidant is not telling scary stories to themselves about shifts and changes and patterns that they're seeing, they really can use that as sort of a superpower and, and notice things about people and comment like, hey, I notice you're not yourself today. Is everything okay? Do you need anything from me? I'm here for you. You know, and they can really pick up on little um, elements of, of, you know, um, old stories they'll tend to remember about people and um, things that are really important to people they might bring up or speak about or ask about in their lives. And it can really make somebody feel like they are seen and known by their fearful avoidant loved one. So these tend to be the things I hear about the most um, and also see the most in fearful avoidance as a general rule. And I hope this makes a whole lot of sense. Um, let me know any comments that you have down below, any things that you find attractive about the fearful avoidant or any other attachment style. And thank you so much for watching and for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you are enjoying this channel and this content, and I will see you in future videos.